Okay, so here we are inside Ubuntu 10.10. Now, the idea behind this series of videos is to give new users to Ubuntu an idea of what applications to use, how to get work done, how to have fun, how to just do everyday tasks that you use your computer for, the best ways to do those things inside Ubuntu. Now, I'm not going to go through the installation because there are bucket loads of videos out there which are perfect for the installation how-tos and dual booting and all that fun stuff. But for right now, I'm going to assume that you have just installed Ubuntu 10.10 that you've downloaded from the website, burned to a disk, installed it, either as a dual boot or by itself. And so here we are sitting inside a freshly installed Ubuntu. There is nothing installed on here, well, except for the screen capture program I'm recording it with. So I'm going to walk you through steps that are essential to get getting your system going, such as all the codecs you need and how to set up mirrors properly, how to get the right sort of programs, and how to just get started. As this series progresses, I'm going to build on the operating system that I've got installed here. So every time that we come back to do another video, we'll get a little bit more advanced, a little bit bigger, a little bit more capable until hopefully by the end of the series we'll have a fully functional desktop ready for everyday use. So the first thing that you want to do when you've installed Ubuntu is you're going to want to set up the mirrors. Now what do I mean by the mirrors? Mirrors are basically the download servers that you're going to pull your updates from. Now the way you download extra software and programs is through the Ubuntu Software Center. And here we are. Now, in order to adjust the mirrors, which are the download servers that you're pulling the software from, you need to go into Edit Software Sources. Now it'll ask for your root password, which is the password for your account, and then it'll go, by default, it'll say download from the main server. Now you want to change this, you go other, and then you look for your country, and then you look for a mirror that you know is going to suit you. So generally speaking, they will show internet service providers who have mirrors with the Ubuntu operating system. There are quite a few. And you can also say, uh, you can also select best server, which performs a test to find the best mirror. Now for me, I'm in Australia, and the best mirror for me is the this one here, which is the internet. So you choose that server, and then you hit close, and now the Ubuntu Software Center will then refresh, and it's all finished, and now we're good to install software. Okay, now the next thing you're going to want to do is run the Update Manager. Now the Update Manager can be accessed from System, Administration, Update Manager. And here it'll give you a list of all the updates that you need to install. Now this is off a fresh Ubuntu install, so as you can see there are quite a few here that need updating. So you need to click install those updates and you'll be well and good. Once you've installed those updates and you've rebooted, then we're good to go and install restricted extras. Basically enables you to play back every single bit of audio and video on the planet. Now, best way to do this is go restricted extras package, which is in the Ubuntu Software Center. And as you can see, it says package contains some commonly used packages in the multiverse re repository. Now, it does not contain the lib DVD C double S2, and that lets you play encrypted DVD. So what you need to do for that is you need to go to this website here and it'll tell you how to install that. But I'll cover that at a later date. For the moment we just click install and it'll go out to the it'll go out to the mirrors and download those restricted extras. So while that's downloading as you can see we're up to 16 megs or so here. Now this is going to vary depending on how fast your internet connection you have. Let's just talk about the interface really quickly. Just introduce some key elements of the Ubuntu interface. So along the top here we have our we have our main status bar. Now here we can lock screen, we can log out, suspend, shut down. Suspend is equivalent to sleep. Hibernate means that it saves your session to the hard drive so then when you boot it up it boots back up with all the applications you had running 
Suspend saves your session to RAM, so it's a much, much quicker to come out. Generally speaking, if you're on a laptop, when you shut the lid, it'll suspend, open it back up, it'll wake up again. And lock screen does exactly what it says. Now, this thing up here is called the Me menu. Now, basically what you do is you set up your accounts with your um, chat provider, whoever that may be, like Windows Live or Jabber or any of those. And you can also set up your broadcast accounts, which are accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Identica. Once you put your login details in there, it syncs to those different services so that you can make updates from your menu, which is very, very handy. Also, we have our time and date with also a calendar. Now, another thing you're going to want to do here is go into locations and click edit. Now, what this will do is it'll give you a locations dialog and you can click add and then add a location name. So you just punch in a city name and search for it and it'll bring up the time zone and everything so that when you've got it synced, It'll show the correct time, date, zone, etc. And eventually it'll pop up with some weather information as well, which, will, which is also very handy. Now here we have the indicator. Now uh, this is the indicator applet, which basically um, gives you shortcuts to set up your chat session, set up your email, set up your broadcast accounts, similar to what this menu does here. The sound menu, that's your volume control and sound preferences. This also integrates with the music player, which is Rhythmbox, and we will get to that at a later video. And we've also got the network manager. Now, the network manager manages all sorts of different connections, wireless, 3G modems, broadband, ADSL, you name it, it'll do it. Create new wireless network, connect to hidden wireless networks. It'll do pretty much anything you ask it. Now, now we also have Firefox, which is the default web browser, and we have the Applications menu. Now this menu is very easy to understand. It's basically, you've got your applications and you've got lists by different categories. And there's one, on, there's one in there that shouldn't be there, but never mind. And you've got places, which is where you're going to store stuff like your desktop, documents, music, pictures, videos, downloads. And then it lists your different devices like hard drives and it also lists your network connect server and you can search for files. It also displays a list of recent documents down the bottom. Then you've got your system which adjusts pretty much everything to do with the system. Preferences will adjust everything to do with your particular user and the way that you like to have your computer run. Administration is going to deal with everything to do with the way your system runs, the whole, the, the operating system as a whole. As you can see, we've got drivers, computer janitor, disk utility. This is more nerdy stuff that, generally speaking, you're not going to use, except for maybe the update manager and maybe a few other tools. But So that should be fairly easy to understand. Then also, if you need help, they've got help and support which brings up the Ubuntu help browser. It basically goes through all the things that I'm going through now. So welcome to Ubuntu, getting around the desktop, applications for different tasks, connecting to the internet, adding applications, playing music and videos. So if you need information after watching this video, then just have a look under system, help and support, and that'll give you all you need to know and basically all I'm telling you here. Then along the bottom here, we have our trash can. We have our workspaces, which Virtual workspaces are a big bonus, I'm going to cover them in a later video, but basically they allow you to have multiple desktops open with multiple windows. So you can have one for your games, one for your uh, office applications, one for your web browsing, etc. Big pr productivity booster. Then we have the taskbar, which is just like a Windows XP taskbar, it just lists the windows that you've got open. And then the show the desktop button, which again, you have your windows open and all you need to do is hit that button and they all minimize. So very, very helpful. You can also customize the look and feel of Ubuntu by simply right clicking the desktop and saying change desktop background. Now, yes, this does let you change the desktop background, but it also lets you configure multi many other aspects of the system as well. You can change your different wallpapers and you can change the themes. Now, this is where Linux gets fun. You can install different themes that make your operating system look completely different from what it does now. 
It can look like another operating system. It can even look like a completely new design that all sorts of people come up with. They generally post them on the internet and you can search around for them and it's a lot of fun. So by default, it comes with the ambience theme, which is the theme that the Ubuntu dev team have created. It also comes with Radiance and a bunch of other ones like New Wave, Dust Sand, Dust, and the Clear Looks is the basic GNOME theme. I don't recommend using that one unless you want your, wind your computer to look like Windows 2000. Okay, we've also got different backgrounds, which I'm going to leave as the default. We've got different fonts, and you can configure all the different fonts that your system uses, and visual effects. And again, this is where a lot of people have a lot of fun. If you have a 3D capable graphics card, automatically you'll be on the normal 3D effects profile. If you have not got a graphics card, you'll be if you have not got a 3D accelerated graphics card, you'll be on none. But I'm going to cover that later on how to fix that and how to get that going if it's not working for you out of the box. Now, it's also going to come up with the TTF MS Core Fonts Installer. Now, you're probably going, what in the world is this? Basically, it's a pull-in installer which pulls in all those Microsoft fonts that people use in Word documents. So this makes it a lot easier to read documents on Ubuntu that were created in Microsoft Word. So all you have to do is accept the end user license agreement and click forward, and it'll pull in those fonts. As you can see, the Ubuntu Restricted Extras package is almost finished, it's just applying the changes. And this is one of the great things about Ubuntu is its easy package management, which again, I'm going to discuss in depth in another video. And there we are, the Ubuntu Restricted Extras package is installed. So now we have a fully functional desktop which can play MP3 player, MP3s, it can play DivXs, it can play AVIs, WMVs, any video or audio file you throw at it. And of course, Flash is installed now, so you can watch YouTube videos and surf the web and all sorts of other different stuff. Very handy indeed. So now that we have a fully functional Ubuntu install, in the next video, we're going to customize it and we're going to tweak it a bit to get it working the way we want it to. And we're also going to start looking at some of the pre-installed applications and how to use them.